Hello, hello. Welcome everyone to this episode of this week's Crashes and Taxes. I am your host for this short little podcast, Rebecca Walser. So excited that you are joining us today. And I want to talk today, we've been talking about quite a bit of how to make money when you're young and what to do. And uh, I want to talk today, tactical asset management. We discussed, we talked about the number one asset class as far as tax is in the tax code. And today I really want to talk about building your financial house or what we refer to as your fiscal house. Everyone has built a fiscal house, whether they realize they've built one or not, they have, and they probably don't know it. When most clients come in to see us, what we see is they have money in the market, which we consider the top of the house, and they have cash or some kind of money market or CDs or some kind of safety kind of money. And that's really the foundation. So the way we look at a fiscal house is, I will just show it to you here on the actual podcast video screen. This is our example of our fiscal house. And for those of you that are not watching, I'll just explain it to you. We have three components to the fiscal house. We have a solid foundation. These are the asset classes that have little to no risk and they are very safe. So not a lot of necessarily a return on these asset classes, but definitely safety to get us through the storm. Then we have the middle section. We call these our hybrid asset classes. That is the wall of our house. I'm gonna come back to those last because they're a combination of the two um, other asset classes. So that's the wall of the house. And that's again, hybrid assets. And then we have the roof of our house. And the roof is what you and I know as the market. So stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, REITs, or any variation of those five separate type of investments, stocks, bonds, ETFs, mutual funds, and REITs. We keep real estate, as you see right here on the fiscal house, outside of the fiscal house of investable assets. Real estate is an investment um, plan unto itself. And for those real estate developers or investors out there that have multiple houses and think that, yeah, I'm gonna just basically live off of my real estate, I understand the real estate tax situation, uh, I will highly caution you not to build all of your wealth into real estate. There are some changes coming that make the taxation of real estate not anywhere near as um, attractive as it currently is. I'm not saying this is going to happen tomorrow or even in the next five years, but I can tell you if you have a 10 year trajectory or greater, you should definitely build assets outside of real estate. So we have the fiscal house, the foundation, the roof, which is the market, the foundation would be our little to no risk asset classes. So to give you some examples, obviously cash, there's always a risk to cash. The risk is that you put it under your bed, you don't make any returns, and then you lose money because of the fact that you're actually um, not keeping up with inflation. So cash is a no risk asset class, but we do have inflation risk um, if you don't invest it. There's also money markets and CDs and laddered CDs and fixed short term annuities would be down here. Government bonds would be in the foundation as well as the alternative to government bonds, which would be whole life insurance. So that's really the foundational assets that we look at with ha which have little to zero risk. The hybrid asset classes are the middle hybrid class, and they are a hybrid of the foundation and of the roof. And specifically what I mean, so this is the class where I think the last 20 years of financial ingenuity has really um, come, and, and really, I'm trying to circle this backwards. It's very hard to do a webcam and, and actually circle this, so I'm talking about these hybrid asset classes right here in the middle of the house. And they're hybrid because they have properties from both the foundation and the roof. So let's start with the foundation. They're hybrid because they have transferred all of the risk of principal loss. So we have no risk of loss of principal. That's not one of our risks. No risk of loss of principal. So it is following the foundation in the sense that it has safety of principal as a key component. So that's the part it picks up from the foundation. However, besides the safety of the foundation, 
all of the growth is derived still from how the market performs. So we have the safety of the foundation, but we have all of the growth deriving from the actual market performance. And how do we do that? Well, we're doing it through some type of options buying on the actual market itself, whether it be an index like the S&P 500, whether we track to that, or whether we buy options on ETFs, whatever we're doing with the options, we're tracking at the end of the day to how some asset class is in the actual roof or of our physical house or the market itself is performing. So while the account is safe, all of the growth is part of or depends on how the market performs through options. So we get growth based on market performance, yet totally safe principal protection. And this is really the last 20 years of financial ingenuity has really come in the walls of, the, of your fiscal house. Most clients come to us, come to us with cash, some kind of layered cash, laddered cash, money market cash, short term cash, not enough cash um, for what they're trying to do. I, I like to see at least a six month reserve, possibly 12 months if you're more volatile on your investment growth. And then, so we like to see some cash, but beyond that, not so much. We want to have money invested. We want to see some asset classes in the walls. The reason that it's important for us to still have money right here in the walls in 2020 is because we need to have another bucket to go access when the market goes down. So imagine this, you've set up yourself a six month reserve of cash. You have everything else invested in the market between ETFs, some bond positions, and some stock positions you hold outright. The market has been going a little bit crazy because of coronavirus. We come out of this thing and we have, say, another downswing because of the government stimulus running out, which is highly probable, very pretty much likely to happen. And so now the government stimulus has run out and we actually have to get some kind of return. But yet you're retired or you're living off of some of this money. The last thing we want to do is take money from uh, the market accounts that are down because of that's where the market is at any given time. So we need to have an alternative investment vehicle that has safety, that is not going down when the market is going down, yet it is still growing with the market and is still getting a decent upside. We used to have CDs. Uh, in the olden days, uh, I wasn't, you know, doing, I didn't have my practice here in those days, but I'm told in the 80s and the 90s, the 70s, the 60s, all the years before, you could get a really decent fixed CD of 6 to 7%, and that was your safe money, and you could put money in that, and you wouldn't have to worry, you can live off of the investments or the interest income from the CD. We don't have CDs that pay 6 or 7% anymore. So now, in order to have a bucket of returns that's paying a, you know, a really decent rate of return yet is safe, the hybrid asset class is really our alternative. So if you have, like most Americans, money in the market and money in cash and no in between, then you're likely going to miss for the rest of your life when the market goes down a vehicle outside of your cash reserves for emergencies to leverage, to live off of, and that's where the hybrid asset classes come in. So in a nutshell, it's very important that in building a fiscal house and designing a fiscal house, we actually do look at, do, does each um, part of the house, has it been leveraged? And if it hasn't been leveraged for you, could it be leveraged and should it be leveraged, more importantly, in your specific situation? Every person is different, every situation is different, everybody's requirements for what they want is different with their money, whether it be legacy or it be cash flow only and spending it all up while you're alive. Whatever your individual you know, purpose of your money is, uh, we don't know. But the bottom line is, it's important that you build your house and actively, proactively, not just going and saying, here's what I have. So um, obviously, we manage money in the market, as you know. Um, but this is something that most advisors do not walk their clients through designing. What is a fiscal house? Have I built a fiscal house? You have, you just might not know how you've built it. And we said, sort of when you come on board, we tell you, okay, well, you've got this much here and you've got this much here and this is how you built your house so far. And here are the changes that we would recommend that you make so that we open up another basket of money, if you will, that can be accessible when it's not the right time to pull money from the actual market. So um, it's important that you understand 
that when you go to a pure money manager or an investment advisor, they're not looking to probably build you a plan. I'm not saying they won't do income modeling for you. They're happy to print out some kind of 50 page, you know, financial software report that really, um, I love getting those from potential clients because in like five minutes I can go through a 60 page report, pretty much know all of the different financial reports there are. And I can see the weaknesses of the case that's been built statistically and point that out to the potential client like very, very quickly. So if you are interested in um, potentially talking to us as, as, as we talk, you know, go forward we're happy if you send that over to us we will dissect it and digest it and really show you where the weaknesses are built in the modeling so they'll give you an income model for the next you know however many years 30 years but that's pretty much all they do they're not really doing a financial plan they're certainly not doing any kind of tax planning so the way that we look at our tax planning is we build your fiscal house and we might actually decide to build the fiscal house specifically with some asset classes that are tax favored along the way. So there are some asset classes in each one of these pieces of the house that are really tax favored and tax free. And so when we build our fiscal house, we also take tax considerations into that. Because I am a tax lawyer, I am authorized and legally able to do that as opposed to 95 plus percent, 96 percent, 98 percent of everybody else who will put a little asterisk and tell you to consult your tax advisor because they have no ability to discuss taxation with you. So to sum up today's podcast, understand that working with a money manager or an institutional money management a financial advisor type person who's just managing your assets in the market, that's probably not somebody who's given you a true fiscal plan. And so that is a difference. You know, we, beyond just managing money in the market, we actually do holistic planning that an- analyzes not only your investments and how they will perform for you for the rest of your life, we do a 40 year projection, but also your tax positions. Where's the money held? What kind of tax asset class is it? And how will that impact your distributions for the rest of your life? That's a holistic plan. When you're talking about taxation and legacy and investments and cash flow modeling, that's really the beginning of a fully holistic plan. That's a plan. An investment is not a plan. So meeting with an investment advisor once a year who tells you, okay, your annual return was this and this, and next year we expect the market to do this, that's um, an investment, that's an investment manager, but it's not a plan that is designed to basically deliver for you what you're looking for. For crashes and taxes, I am Rebecca Walser. I look forward to uh, speaking and listening to you guys tuning in again. And if you're listening by podcast, by audio, looking looking forward to that as well. The market, just a quick mill market update. The market has done pretty well um, recently. We've got a lot of uh, indicators going in our direction right now. We have the ISM uh, manufacturing index that's looking really positive from June to July and July till now. It's getting revised. Our year, our weekly unemployment numbers came and lower than we expected this week. So that's also great news. And all the tech stocks um, have had recently blowout numbers. So the market on the tech side still looks like we have some more runway for growth. Looking forward to crashes and taxes next week with you. I'm your host for the week, every week, Rebecca Walser. Until then.